All right, so I was just talking to the neighbor. I guess she says it was a bear that actually ripped that screen door off. <laughs> she said last night there was like a 300 pound bear cruising through the neighborhood, like right down this street out here. So, all right, so day three, let's start hanging some doors and windows. These were some doors we bought uh, probably about 10 years ago for our house and we never installed them. They've been sitting in my shed forever. Um, so we finally found a place to purpose them. It'll be nice maybe to have like a nice deck to walk out to out there with the French doors. That's the, uh, the plan. Let's do it. Bought a window from Home Depot. It's a 52 by 49. So this is 52 by like 60 something. So I'm just gonna have to close each side off somehow. So I was doing a little math trying to figure out the pitch on this roof. Um, so over four feet, it only actually pitches two inches. Um, so it's only a half inch or a half oh, 12 pitch. Um, so I'm just going to have to angle those two by sixes I bought. So this was like a makeshift ridge beam that uh, went through the middle of the, the mobile home. And in order to put the new um, rafters in, I had to take this out. So it starts at two inches and then it stops it stops pitching at 57 and a half. So I'm just gonna mark the line. Right. And then just take out that section and that'll be my pitch. So first mistake of the day, uh, these are not exactly 12 foot, they're 12 foot 1 inch, so we're going to have to take half inch off each side. Let's go. So I ended up having to actually cut these down quite a few times to actually get them to fit in there um, because I couldn't get it up past that point right there because it kept, would bump underneath. So I ended up actually cutting it pretty short and then having to brace, rebrace, as you'll see here in a minute. Yeah. A rafter in one of these things looks like. Half a two by two. So I finally got one up. That was a pain in the butt. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be able to do the whole ceiling though. It's gonna be too hard on myself. But that was the main issue there. So I think I'm gonna run another one here. Run another one across here. And I think we'll be good. That thing came down and hit the glass. 
I am freaking lucky that didn't break. Holy cow, that would have been bad. Oh, damn it. That was stupid. It looks like it looks like something hit the roof right here. At some point. So I guess I'm just gonna reframe, remake this whole section right here. All right, so this is what I managed new bracing for this new joist coming across the top right after I. All right, I got the second one up. That one was a little bit easier. Oh, um, I think I want to do this one here. This one's sagging big time. <coughs> if you look, you can see it's drooping. So I may do this one. And the rest look actually pretty good. So I don't even think these things were attached. I just pulled them right off. And these things are a joke. So I bought one of these uh, laser levels when I was redoing the floor of my other house. And these things are great for uh, figuring out floors and ceilings, stuff like that. And you can see how droopy that is. I have to take that one out too. All right, we got all new Raptors. Nice strong roof. This is the crap that was in there before. Two by. And then here I decided to go uh, two by six to hold up the actual rafters on the sides. And that way it had nice and strong bracing on both sides. I'm gonna use a bottle, I'm gonna use a bottle jack to um, Straighten this board out because it's got a little bow in it, so straighten out a little bit. And then right here I'm toenailing the um, the rafters with uh, I think two and a half inch deck screws. Just to give it that extra support and lock them in pretty good. So well, now we have a much stronger roof here, for sure. That's like a good respirator. Let's go. switches here. One of them is for that light. I don't know what the other one's for. I gotta figure that out. Hey, if you're wondering why I'm in sandals, it's because I forgot my shoes and we live like three hours away. So I'm gonna take the old window out. I don't know what kind of drill bit they use for these, but kind of weird square things. But I'm gonna take these two out and turn it into one, one window.
Um, this I filmed a few weeks earlier down at a uh, spring that was a few miles down the road from the house that we bought. This is the kind of stuff uh, I'm looking forward to seeing more of. It's a beautiful place. But for now, back to work. All right, getting at it early this morning. You got this butyl tape, that's what's really holding it together here. Just gotta rip that out. Let's get that. Shut comes loose. This morning we got a hole in the house so these things literally are held together with staples this is all staples through here we had some rot all right so I do have an electrical wire that I'm gonna have to move so I think we're just gonna move it up around the top of the door do it that way Got a box here, goes across, and then there's another box. So it uh, definitely helped to have various uh, cutting tools right here. All right, now we got a pretty big opening here. There's dinosaurs in these woods. <sighs> All right, so now I'm gonna frame the door out. All right, so the wall is going to be bumped out because of the brace that I used across the top. So what I'm going to do is just bump out the framing of the door. So when I hang my drywall, everything will be out another inch and a half. On each stud, I'm going to have to shim that way, just on this side of the wall. And also because I'm using a, a door for 
you know, a house, not a trailer. These walls aren't, are only uh, three and a half. I gotta go, you know, at least a two by four, so. Or two and a half, I'm sorry. The walls are only two and a half, and so I'm creating three and a half inch walls. But anyway. This is the second. Even though it's not supporting the roof, it's going to give me something to attach my drywall to since I'm out. I'm bumped out an inch and a half, which is the size of a, the short side of a two by four. So then that way, when I go and rebuild the inside wall, all I have to do is use the flat side of a two by four for mounting my drywall. flip-flops because I forgot my shoes and I live three hours away so all right let's see if she fits Falling out the door though. Alright, let's see what we got here. First mistake of the day. Don't read like me and uh, make sure you read before you install. Because I just had this whole thing and had to remove the header because I forgot to remove two screws that they use to keep the door lock shut. Live and learn, I guess, huh? All right. It's not a problem where the door won't, the doors won't come together. Oh, sorry, when this one's closed, this one bangs into it. I think it's because I squished the middle too far the middle measurement is a quarter inch shorter than the top and bottom so i'm going to take out this two by four here and see if it bows out that way some more okay so i think i actually forgot what the issue was this the original um stud for the mobile home is not level it's leaning this way so when i butted mine against it the door was shifting so I couldn't get the doors to close properly, so I'm just gonna have to remove that two by four and just kind of shim the door in um, and just get the door, you know, plumb. Three hours later. Here we are, like two hours later. These doors were a beast. I just couldn't get, I had them in installed, but I couldn't get the door to close right, so I took it all apart. Um, Plum level did everything, but I still can't get these doors to close right. So I'm just gonna move on. And we're just gonna have a door that rubs a little bit, but otherwise, you know, it looks alright. On to the window. Let's go. flashing 
all around. Window went a lot smoother. I had to frame it this way a little bit because it was smaller than the opening. Looks pretty good. Nice new window. All right, got a lock. Door. Thing you do, take the instructions, throw them away. All right, so I had another problem today. I used this spray foam and it shoved the door over. Now, this door will not close. So, back to square one. Fuck it, dude. So yeah, I had to give up on the door for a little while because it was uh, starting to aggravate me, so. Moved on to some plumbing. Maybe settle my brain a little bit. Try to figure out what's going on with this door. I may have to just remove the whole thing and start over. Oh man. Oh well. It's part of it. Part of the learning curve, I guess. Alright, so I bought these short bites because I forgot my torch. And cost just as much to buy a new torch than just buy these things, so I'm just gonna go with sharp bites. Got these fancy little buggers are like uh, I think 15 bucks a pop. It's crazy. Just push them on though I guess. These are reusable. Turn the water on, no leaks, looks good. So what I'll eventually do, I guess, depending on if we leave the water heater behind that wall, um, I'll just tap into these for the sink, for the kitchen. Those run to the bathroom. Let's see if this is working. Oh yeah. Alright, thanks for following along and uh, catch you guys in the next one. Like and subscribe. So I wake up this morning, after all that frustration, I come out here, it's cool out. Or like 70 degrees, right? And this door, look at that. Perfect. What in the world, dude? Ah, <sighs> anyway, so I think it's just expanding when it gets hot.